So right here with me, I have BenQ latest SW270C. This is a 2K hardware caliber display. I have done an unboxing on this. I have done a review video on it, so you can check it out in the link right above. Now, the BenQ SW270C comes also with a second generation hockey puck that you can kind of see here. Now, normally the hockey puck would sit down here. I kind of move it here for our demonstration to make it easier. But what I'm gonna do in this video is talk about the hockey puck, what it can do, the added function key, and how you can go in and custom function your hockey puck or custom program it so that you can get the functionality that you like. I'm Art Suwan Sang, I'm a BenQ brand ambassador, and let's get right into this. With the second generation hockey puck, BenQ has replaced the center cluster of buttons with a center just a dial and a push button right there. It has a really nice design. The hockey puck's a little bit more weighted. And normally, no, the hockey puck does not sit on the screen like this. This just makes it much easier for me to do the demonstration of the menu. The other thing that's neat too is that the moment you press the hockey puck once, you activate the on-screen menu. Very similar to how you would press any button on the old on the old hockey puck gen 1 as well but the nice thing about this is there is a separate menu now specifically for the controller keys so no longer do you have to go into system settings and custom function program one two the custom key one two and three here in the system settings there is now a dedicated controller key menu What's really cool about the controller key menu is that it's separated into a couple of things, into subsections. The first subsection is controller key one, two, three. So these are the one, two, and three keys that are right there. Now the default from the factory is set to the exact same thing as the first generation, Adobe RGB, sRGB, and advanced black and white mode. Now we can always go in and change this. So what I'm gonna do now is let's go inside and show you how to change these. So I would go into the controller key menu and then I'm, I would be on here to control the key. Now if I dial this, I can move this up and down, but what I'm gonna do here is just let's focus on the controller key one, two, three, boom. So I can click on that. Now with the controller key one, two, three, I can choose so that it will change to different color modes or if I want to, I can change between different input modes. That means it could be the one of the two HDMI a USB-C or the display port, but I'm not gonna do that because I find the color mode much more useful. So in this case, the default, as you can kind of see here, one, two, and three, these are the default from the factory. But if we want to change these around, the way how we do that is we highlight the one that we want to remove, we go ahead and click on it, now it's gone. Notice how all the other color modes now light up. Let me show you that again. So I'm gonna go ahead and press one there. See how the color modes are all grayed out? The moment I press that, the color modes all light up. That means you can now select them. In fact, if you want to keep going down the list, you can go ahead and do that and remove all of them or unpair it from the button one, two, and three. So in this case, let's say I want button one to be on my calibration one because that's specifically for my laptop calibration. What I can do is go ahead and highlight calibration one, press there. It puts a little number one in there. Now my custom function one button is now to my laptop calibration. Let's change a couple other things. Let's say that I use sRGB a lot or I want to proof an sRGB. I can go ahead and assign that to button number two. And let's say to black and white mode, I don't really use, I'm not really using that as much. But let's say that I want to use this new mbook color mode. Let's go back here as the custom button number three, I can go ahead and do that as well. And now I'm done. So you can go ahead and change these buttons out as you wish, as you see fit. So for instance, down the road, if I come in and I think that sRGB no longer fits my needs, I can come in here and just remove it like that. Let's say I wanted Adobe RGB this time, I can go ahead and do that. And then afterwards, I'm gonna go ahead and quit this menu here. So now I can go ahead and press that. We can see is on calibration one, Adobe RGB, and the third one is the M book mode because I changed it from the black and white. Now you can go ahead and custom design this or custom program this in any way that fits your workflow needs. And I know a lot of photographers that find this really useful. So let's see what else we can do with this hockey puck generation two. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the center button. Let's go into the controller key menu one more time and then this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the rotation key which is the second sub menu down. Now the rotation key 
it is not the dial key right here. That's the, the term they use here is a dial. It actually kind of sounds confusing. So just kind of remember that when they talk about rotation key, they're talking about these three little triangles here. And this key by default will switch between different input modes that you have on your display. So if you have multiple devices connected to your display, this is a great way to do it. But if you don't find this useful, you can also change it to other modes as well. But let's kind of talk about this first and let's see how we can go ahead and set the different input modes. So I'm going to go into rotation key. We're going to go into input. And now by default, it's already set into input. And as you can kind of see here, there's just check marks in the box. So let's say I want to take display port out. What I would do is just highlight, press the, the dial, and then I can just dial this down. And let's say I want it to be at HDMI 2. I can go ahead and press that and put it in like that. Now notice though how these only have check mark. It doesn't have number one, two, and three, but that also makes sense if you really think about it because it doesn't really correspond to a physical one, two, and three button. It's just literally a loop cycle that it goes through. Now what I can do, then if I want to go in here, let's go back to the rotation key one more time and let's change the input back to, let's take HDMI two out and then we'll go into display port, okay. Now let's say if I don't find an input mode useful, what I can do is come in here again and I can change this so that it will do color mode. So color mode is really neat because I can set this to be the extension of my one, two, and three key. So in this case, I already have come in and programmed this so that it will show advanced black and white, it will show Rec 709 and DCI-P3. So what I can do in this case is I'll get out of the menu. And in this case, I can go ahead and cycle between advanced black and white mode, Rec 709, and the pre-calibrate from the factory display P3. So you can go ahead and do that and set this rotation key as an added extra function button. This is one of the things that really separate this from the first generation hockey puck. Okay. Now the way how we go in to custom function or custom program or controller key is going to be very similar to the way how I kind of showed you in a dual illumination video. So you can go ahead and set that too. If you have multiple devices that you've done like multiple calibrations on, you can go ahead and come in and program either custom function key one, two, and three here or the rotation key. Now, one more thing I want to talk about the rotation key. This is kind of like a little hack, I think, to kind of disable it. So if you don't want the rotation key to do anything at all, you can just go ahead and come in here and set it to mute and just go ahead and just do that. And now it's just going to set it to mute. It doesn't really do anything because the display doesn't have a built in speaker. At least that's as far as I know, it doesn't have a built in speaker. So you can go ahead and set it to do that. This way it doesn't interfere with anything else or interfere with your colors or different color modes. All right. Now the last, what we're going to talk about here is the start of show, which is the, uh, which is the dial key here. The controller key dial, that's the term that they refer to it. So what we're going to do is go in here. Now the dial key can be set to do a couple of things. By default is set to change brightness. You can go ahead and rotate that and set it to change contrast, or you can also go ahead and set it to do volume. Now in this case, because I'm using a Mac with this and a USB type C, it doesn't really bring the volume out to the, to the display by any means. So uh, a nice way to kind of think about this is that if you want this key to, dis to be disabled, to not really mess up with your calibration or the brightness in your display, setting it to volume is one of the ways to kind of like to disable it. It's like a hack for that in a way. Okay. But now let's kind of continue on a little bit here. Let's go back into that menu. So control a dial key. Now in this case, if I set it to brightness, a couple of things to note is that let's go out here. So now let's go into Adobe RGB. I'm going to go ahead and press the custom function button too. That's what I uh, pre-program it to Adobe RGB. And what happened is if I actually start to rotate this dial, you're going to notice right away that the screen is starting to change in brightness drastically. So in the preset color mode from the factory, if you don't go ahead and set that to the volume, Every time you come in and you, you dial this wheel, it's going to actually adjust your brightness. Now you can also, you can always press on it. If you, for instance, let's go out of here. If you just press on it, it will just pull up the menu, which is not a big deal. However, if you just accidentally grace it by just turning it that way, it can really go in and change the brightness setting on the preset color mode. So if you want to, again, like I said, disable that from happening, go ahead and set this dial center dial button so that it actually performs the function of lowering or hiring the volume. 
One more thing here that I like to add to this is that if you are on the calibration slot, for example, I'm on the calibration slot here. In this case, this calibration slot one is linked specifically to my laptop. The nice thing about this is that as you turn the wheel up and down, the brightness is going to be fixed. So it doesn't matter how much I turn this wheel, it doesn't change that. But in the preset color mode from the factory, the brightness can be changed freely. So what I usually do, and for mine, from the, from playing with this, what I usually do is to avoid all those problems in this entirety, I go into the controller key, controller key dial, and I change this so that it does volume because it doesn't really do anything on a Macintosh system. As you can kind of see there, it just changes the volume, there's no sound output to the display, and that's a quick way, quick and safe way to kind of go about this second generation hockey puck. So I hope that you find this video on some of the secrets, the tips and the tricks of a second generation hockey puck helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in a the comment below. Please like and subscribe to my channel, hit on the notification bell so you will be updated every time I upload a new cool video like this. And until next time, art is right. It's filming, it is filming, duh. I didn't, do, I didn't, I didn't clap yet, did I, did I clap? Oh, dang, I'm, I'm, I'm losing it, I'm losing it, okay. I forgot to introduce who I am, because right now my V doesn't have enough subscribers, so I need to tell you who I am. At some point, if I get like a million, be like, yeah, I'm art. Anyway, that's a side note. Okay. You need to be more excited. Excited, yay. Just smile, it helps, yeah. <laughs> so right on the side would... So what we have here with the second generation hockey puck is a, the part in the design language. Boy, this is a... <laughs>